Okay, so this is uh, converting fractions to decimals, and this is the second video in this particular series, because the fractions themselves are a little bit more tricky, a little bit more difficult to deal with. Okay, so um, what we said before in the previous video is that when we're converting a fraction, so let's say this particular fraction is going to be 16 over 5, which is a really quite a difficult, odd, improper fraction to deal with. Um, and we want to convert that to a decimal. So what we do is we recognize that, that 16 over 5 is the same as saying 16 divided by 5, and we can rewrite that as short division. In other words, how many lots of 5 are there in 16? And because it's a decimal and a decimal equivalent, I don't know how many decimal points there will be, or decimal places after the decimal point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 3 initially in order to give me a little bit of space to be able to calculate the decimal equivalent. Um, when you're working and calculating these sorts of fractions, uh, to decimals, it's not always given that it's going to be a nice round number uh, like 0.25 or 0.375. Sometimes these numbers can go on quite a long way, and sometimes we have to round them up or round them down or have them to one or two decimal places in order to make the calculation work for us. Okay, so 5 into 16, well, 3 fives are 15 and there is one left over. 5 into 10 is 2. Actually, from what I said before, I don't need any more of these decimal points, or decimal places, because there's nothing left from that 10, so I don't need to continue to divide. So the answer to 16 over 5 as a decimal is 3.2. And this is the equivalent decimal to this 16 over 5 fraction. OK, so let's make things a little bit more tricky. Let's say that we've got something uh, a bit more difficult to deal with, which would be 15 over 67, which is not a nice fraction. It's quite a difficult fraction. And we have to convert that to a decimal. OK, so 15 over 67 is the same as saying 15 divided by 67. And what I can do then is I can rewrite that as, in this particular case, long division, because it's going to be uh, how many lots of 67 there are in 15. Now, I've got a bit of a feeling that this one's going to go on a little bit, OK? So I'm going to give myself plenty of space to work with. And I think one of the important principles when you're dealing with long division is to make sure that you have a nice, thorough, methodical way of doing things. There are a couple of videos that you can have a look at, and that will show you how to perform these types of calculations. OK, so 67 into 15. Well, I can't do. So in other words, this fraction is definitely going to be less than 1. So I've got a 0 there, and I now have 150. OK, well, one of the key issues that you need to uh, use with um, long division is estimation. So as with uh, working out uh, um, decimals, you need to initially at least ignore the decimal point. And if you like, pretend that that's 150. So in other words, my question is, how many lots of 67 are there in 150? OK. Well, my estimation is, is that if that was 70, then two lots of 70 are 140. So I think it's fair to say that because it's 67 into 150, it's likely to be 2. OK. So what I'm going to do here at the side is I'm going to write 67 times 2 and calculate this. And I would say that when you're calculating long division, this is your key area. You need to make sure that you have your calculations, your short, division, short multiplication calculations at one side if you can. So 2 times 7 is 14, 1 to carry, 6 is 12, 13. So 
67 times 2 is 134. So my instinct was right that 67 into 150 is going to be two lots, and then I'm going to have a little bit left over. So 67 into 150 is 2, and that's 134. And what's left over now is 16. Okay. So what I'm going to do is bring down that 0. And ask myself the same question. How many lots of 67s are there in 160? Okay. Well, my instinct is, is to calculate 67 times 3. But before I do that, I'm going to look at my number again. Because if this 67 was 70, 70 times 3 would be 210. Which I think is a bit too much. So I'm going to stick with 67 uh, times 2, which is 134, because I know that 160 take away 134 is less than 67. So it's not going to be three lots of 67. It's actually going to be still two lots, which is also 134. And sure enough, if I take that away, I've only actually got 26 left. So I wouldn't have been able to take another lot of 67. Okay, I've got to bring down the zero, and there it is. And now my question is, how many lots of 67 are there in 260? Well, again, I need to just pause a little bit, because I need to estimate this uh, number, how many lots of 67 are there in 260? Well, 67 times 4 would be rough, would be that number doubled. Well, if that number doubled is going to be 268. So 67 times 4 will be 268. But I've only got 260. So I know at this point that I can just calculate 67 times 3. Well, 3 7s are 21, 2 to carry, 6 3s are 18, 20, 201. So actually I've got 59 left, which is less than 67, because 201 from 260 is 59. So I was able to achieve three lots of 67. This particular uh, type of calculation can go on an awful long way. I'll just do one more zero. And again, 67 out of 590, well, that's a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to take a bit of a guess, because if it was 67 by 10, that would be 670, so that's not going to work. If it's 67 times 9, that would be uh, roughly about 600. So I think it's going to be 67 times 8. And I'm just going to calculate this here. 7 eighths of 56, 5 to carry. 6 eighths of 48 plus 5 is going to be 53. So there we go, 536. So what it's meant is, is that my estimation skills have been quite good in making sure that my short multiplication calculations have been kept to a little bit of a minimum. And when it comes to these sorts of calculations, uh, sometimes this can go on and on and on. So really, if you get it to maybe, say, three decimal places, that's usually absolutely sufficient for the purposes of most exams. So 15 over 67 as a decimal equivalent will be 0.224 to 3 decimal places. Um, I hope that's helped. It's a little bit more of a complex calculation, um, but if you have a look at the video again, maybe stop it, you'll be able to see how I perform that. And if you have a look at some of the other maths videos, that will show you how to perform long division.